Okay, let's go ahead, guys, and talk about uh, heating and cooling. So if you guys go to chapter um, 23, a topic that we will be um, discussing and a couple of calculation that will follow, I will do some, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the concept of heating and cooling, and they will do some calculation for heating and cooling. How do you calculate the disconnect, the overcome friction device, the conductors for an AC unit? And an electric and an electric furnace. Anybody have seen electric furnace? Not electric as in uh, the fan is electric. Electric as in the heating element is electric. I haven't seen it here, but you can you can burn electricity to make heat. So that's what we're going to be talking about: heating and cooling the um, Since it's residential, so we'll talk about like I said, the electric heat guys, and we'll talk about the air conditioning. How to heat and cool your house? Yesterday we talked about the fans, exhaust fans. Um, when it comes to electrical design, guys, I would say, dare to say, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, heating, ventilation, heating the building cooling the building and ventilating the building as in exhausting the air out and bringing fresh air in that's Karen that will make 30 percent of your electrical work that you're going to do in any building so when I say 30 percent so th probably 30 percent of your electrical 30 to 40 percent of your electrical load is going to be related to how do you heat and cool and ventilate the building Obviously, guys, they have mechanical engineers at them that take care of this business. Our job is when the electric mechanical engineers and mechanical designers lay out all their heating, cooling, ventilation system in the area with the docks that they're going to use, they come to us to power these equipments and sometimes to control them. Sometimes they do a lot of control themselves. So that's what's going to be in every building you're going to walk in, every building. You're going to ask yourself first, you guys are doing it with me right now. Am I going to lay out the power layout, right, for this building? Receptacles. All my receptacles, I'm going to lay them out, right? Done. Then the second power thing you're going to ask yourself, how about mechanical equipment? Ask yourself, where are the mechanical, how am I going to heat, cool, and ventilate this room or this building? You're going to ask either, typically if it's dwellings, you know, somebody has to decide where the air conditioning should be located, and then you're going to power it. After you do the heating, the, uh, the mechanical equipment, then you're going to ask yourself how you're going to do lights for this building, right? So it's very simple. You do the receptacles, so you can plug in that load. You do the lights, you can see, and then you want the people like yourself when they're sitting in a building to feel comfortable to perform their work properly. So what do people need to perform their work properly? They need a heated or cooled, heated slash cooled and ventilated place so they don't sleep behind the wheel. Right, so heating and cooling is a major, major thing when we do the electrical. So we'll talk about heating and cooling. Um, when you, when it comes to heating, guys, there's many ways of heating. Um, we have electric furnace to heat the building. We have commercial building. We have boilers. We have boilers. We have natural gas that we burn, and we boil water and we heat the building with it, um, circulate it. So electric furnace, electric furnace. In talking and willing, all what we do is we have a heater, we burn electricity to generate heat, and we have a big blower that blows the air right through this hot air to circulate that air through the house. That's is really not rocket science. So we have also electric baseboard heaters. These are the ones that you guys have when you were doing the house. I told you in the stairways, the three stairways that we have, we're going to have an electric baseboard heater, basically. These are um either some of them if, if they're baseboard heaters they don't have a fan but some heaters do have a fan heating element with a fan that circulate the idea guys if you have a fan what when you when you generate heat first you have to generate heat then you have to spread the heat there are two ways of spreading the heat either you you literally spread by conduction right but just you know you don't move it right it's spread by conduction like baseboard heater or you force spread it how do you force spread the heat fan it Right? You put a fan, right? Some of them, you've seen these little uh, uh, heaters. They, they have the heating element here and the fan right behind it and blows the hot air right into the room. So it circulates the hot air. Um, so that's the way, either by conduction, it just spread by itself, right? Or you can force spread it. 
so electric furnace, so um, we have also heating tape. Heating tape is they can put in the floor, in the ceiling, in the walls, a tape, literally a wire that burn electricity and get hot. And by heating the walls, the floors or the ceiling or and or the ceiling, they can heat the room. That's another heating heating way. We also here have heating pump. We'll talk about the heating pump that the reverse of AC. So these are the topics that we're going to be talking about. Um, element is affected by voltage variation. When it comes to electric heat, guys, this is R. And every time you have a, a, a resistive heat, the variation of the voltage is a major thing. So voltage variation we talked about, guys. Um, Derek, if you remember, we said if you double the voltage on the same load, that same load will get you four times more power. But there's one little problem. If it's not rated to give four times more power, what's going to happen to it? Burn. If you cut the voltage by half, from 240, you cut it to 120, right? The same piece of equipment that's supposed to be rated for 240, now you decide single-handedly to power it with 120. That's a mistake, by the way. Not, not how it should be. Then you cut the power by one fourth. So if it's supposed, if this is supposed to give you a 100 kW, a, a, a thousand watt, now it's giving you two, 250 watt only. So that's what the variation of the voltage. Variation of the voltage and resistive load is a big deal. Talk about this one. Um, nameplate, HVAC equipment, guys, chillers and air handling unit has a nameplate information. And it's so important for determining how to install the system. So what you're going to hear chat talk about locked or current, uh, rated load amps, all this information, minimum circuit ambicity, all this information you have to fully understand it. When you design the disconnect, the fuse, the conductor for this piece of equipment. By the way, ultimately, guys, what ultimately we need to do, we need to take an overhead fiction device and a feeder, right? and a disconnect, and sometimes some type of a controller with overload, right? And feed AC system. This is what you're doing for every load. I don't know if I've noticed, Matt, everything that you do with Chad, it's all about this line. You need to size the overcomputation device for the AC unit, like we did it for the pump and we did it for the pan. You need to size the conductor for the, for the unit. You need to size the disconnect Number three for the unit, you might get involved in sizing the controller, number four, the controller for unit. So a lot of these controller HVAC equipment guys come the controller built in by the manufacturer, but that's important. You're going to ask yourself, am I as electrical engineer involved in the controller or am I not? And then we get involved in the overload, number five, right? The overload, sizing the overload. These are the five major things that we size for any, any system. This could be AC unit, this could be um, heater. Some of them, some loads take all the five, some loads take, like overload is not an issue, so they don't have overload. But ultimately, that's what you're trying to achieve. Size this one, so you go to the air conditioning and wire it, right? Lay out the equipment and wire it. Um, must be installed. Another thing that we'll talk about for HVAC equipment to maintain them, Right next to where the equipment is located, they put a receptacle within 25 feet of the HVAC equipment so you can work on these equipment. That's requirement by code. A 120, uh, 15 or 20 amp, like these receptacle right in front of you. They put it right there within sight, within 25 feet of the equipment. And then we are not mechanical engineers, guys, but we get involved in the energy rating of the equipment. Anybody here, the SEER rating of the AC units? Do you guys have the AC units, like if you live in a house or anywhere else, you have an AC and they call SEER 13 and 11, and I think it's 13 is the highest. I think maybe they go higher than that. The SEER, that's how energy efficient your equipment is. We care, well, I don't, I don't want to say we care less as electrical engineers, but we really don't get involved in sizing these for equipment. Nobody will ever ask you, what size chiller do you need for this build? That's mechanical engineers will do that. But it's really good to understand, though. We work with them day in, day out. It's good to understand how they size it, what it means. So you are an educated customer, right? An educated engineer. When you sit with them, you understand the language that they use. So you can design your system better. So there's the energy um, part of it. A couple of things, guys, about electric heat. I emphasize in Minnesota, 
most of what we do is we burn natural gas because it's more, I believe it's more economical in our area to burn natural gas as a source of energy to heat our homes and our buildings in Minnesota. If you go to Dunwoody right now, we're burning natural gas. If you go to my house, we're burning natural gas. Your house, your, wherever you guys live, you're burning, right? Anybody is burning other than natural gas to heat their building? Anybody is burning electricity, right? Do you have, anybody have seen an electric furnace? Like the burn heating element? Anybody? Karen, do you guys have seen it? It's all we burn electricity. We burn electricity, right? And then we have a big blower that blows the air right through these coils that's hot, right? And then we get that heat circulated through the ducts into your house or into our building at Dunley. Okay, so when I say electric heat, I used to confuse a lot of students, guys. Well, well every, every heat, guys, electric heating or electric furnace, every furnace is electric. No. When we mean electric furnace, guys, the furnace has two parts. Part number one is the heating element, and part number two is the fan. You guys see that? Part number one is the heating. How do you generate heat? Okay, when you say electric furnace, this is electric, and of course the fan is electric, both of them, right? When you say a gas furnace, you, this here's a gas furnace, the heating coil here, this is the only electric thing is electric as the fan. This one is natural gas. We burn, we get the heat through natural gas. Can I get you guys into this? how to think about it, like the, the apartment that we have, it has natural gas furnaces. By code, if it's a natural gas furnace, very simple, you allocate a dedicated 15 amp circuit to feed this baby. 15 amp circuit with number 14 to feed this natural gas furnace, just for the floor. If it's an electric heat, you know what the amp for the electric heat? You're looking at 50 amp, 50 amp double pole circuit to feed an electric furnace. Why? Because you're burning electricity, not just blowing up air through a coil that's that's receiving its heat from natural gas. Can I get you guys to understand that concept, electric furnace? Okay, what's the advantage of this electric furnace? Again, quiet compared to other furnaces, clean and safe. So why safe? Natural gas explosion, natural gas poison. So it's safer compared to what? To natural gas or other means of power. Uh, fumes is a big deal. No fumes in it. Uh, and no fuel tanks if you live in the rural areas and you're burning some type of other fuel. There is no natural, if you have electric furnace, there is no tank. In the cities, we don't have tanks because we get it through the city, right? But if you live in uh, rural areas, you need a tank if you have natural gas or, uh, or other uh, methods of, of of burning it. Chimney, no need for chimneys. Uh, does not require a chimney if you're burning electricity. And uh, does not remove oxygen from um, from the air as much. You are not burning. You're not, um, there is no burning chambers and you're not consuming oxygen in the process of generating heat. So, safer. What's that? This said, why don't we use it in Minnesota at least? Anybody knows? Natural gas is cheaper. That's why it's not commonly used here. Here's how it looks like, guys. Here's your electric furnace. So right in here, my friends, you have a heating element. And this is a 240 heating element. Look at this one. This is um, uh, the size of this one. Um, um, the fuses, uh, when we size, I believe, uh, was, uh, it was a 100 amp switch. So you're looking at a 100 and fuse switch look at this almost a service almost a service to feed this boy almost a whole service 240 to pull to feed just the furnace so typically if you have electric heat guys you have um, a separate meter that meter it so um so it can get you different demand the utilities will give you different demand and you need a lot of power to power it and when you have electric furnace you have the power circuit here's my power circuit and you will have your control control circuit every time we have heating or cooling you're going to ask yourself first i need to power yep here's my fuse disconnect here's my brand circuit and all the controller is right into the furnace D done then how am i going to control it how are you going to control the furnace do you really want to turn it on and off when you need heat no you need the furnace 
you need a thermostat. So then you, you deal with class two, which we call it class two. Later on, we'll talk about class two gas circuit, 24 volt, um, 24 volt uh, class two control circuit. Who's going to be installing this thermostat wire? Who's going to be installing this thermostat, um, thermostat itself? Typically in, in residential, what we do, guys, residential. We install the thermostat. We install the thermostat wire to the furnace, and the furnace guys comes and hook up the wire. Any comments? Any questions, guys? About electric heat? About electric heat? When we size things for electric heat, I'm going to take an example in a second. Very, very simple. When you set, size it, very simple. You're going to t t take the amps of the of the equipment, multiply it by 1.25. And from there, you size the following over current protection device, number two, uh, branch circuit, and number three, uh, disconnect, if, if any, disconnect, if any. This furnace needs a disconnect, guys. So your circuit breaker right next to the furnace will act as your disconnect. Otherwise, you are to provide a disconnect for this furnace. That's why they have the fuse disconnect here right into it. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand how this works. I'm going to take an example in a second after my lecture here and go over how to size it. Very simple. I'm going to size these three or four things for you. Um, the article that talks about heat, guys, is article 422 and article 4, I'm sorry, 424 talks about the heat, resistive heat. Article 424, very simple. It tells you three things. When you size the conductor, when you size the fuse or the circuit breaker, or your disconnect, multiply the load by 1.25 and go to the next standard. It also tells you you are to provide a disconnect for this piece of equipment. The disconnect could be, it has wood inside that disconnect, or it could be part of the equipment. You have a disconnect right next to the equipment. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad, for the disconnect, the overcompetition device, and the brand circuit for this electric furnace? What's the difference between this furnace and the furnace that you guys are doing for Chad? This is an electric burning furnace. The furnace that you guys are doing with me is a natural gas burning furnace. What's the difference? It is, I, I need a 100 amp two pole circuit to feed it. The ones that you guys have, we need only 15 amp just to burn, just to run the blower. Cool? So that's your electric furnace. Here's how you do it. Here's an example, a good example, guys. I have a furnace with a 79 amp 240, 79 amp 240. Can you guys see that um, load? And when you size the conductor, look what we do. We multiply by 1.25. You get you this, and you go to 310, 15, P16, and that will get you um, 100 amp at 75 cents. So we're rating it for 75. So you get you three conductors, three, um, uh, two conductors number three. And then the overcapture device, the fuse, can you guys see the same thing? I end up with this number, and obviously this is not a standard, so I go to the next standard. Look at the switch. Can you guys see the switch? The same thing. The switch matched the overcapture device. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, how to size uh, an electric furnace? That's it. 1.25 is your magic number, resistive load. Okay, so that's my furnace. Then we get into the... Um, resistance heating cable so we're done with the furnace that's have its own heating element and a blower in it resistant heating cable guys these can be in these are embedded in floors ceilings or walls they're plugged with typically 20 amp circuit you you hardwire them and they heat the walls the ceiling and or the floor and by heating these conduction they heat the, the roof anybody have had a heating tape or heating cables embedded this is one form of heat. They're in the walls. So you can put them uh, um, in the plaster or between the two layers of the drywall. You wire them with a 20 amp circuit dedicated and you put them, you loop them um, through the walls and you heat the walls. By heating the walls, you heat the room. So the, another form of heat. Um, above the ceiling, like you said, in the walls. Um, so when you, but when you, so here's my wall. And here's my heating cable right in my wall here, whatever. And here's my circuit um, that's feeding it, say a 20 amp circuit. Now, when you put your heating cables, guys, these are self-regulated heating cable. When you put your heating cable, you are to maintain a two inch um, above the heating ceiling, not less than two inch above the heating ceiling. You have to keep your wires away from the heating cable. What's wrong with putting the wires next to the heating cable? It's hot. 
So there's when you put your heating cable, you have to remove, you maintain a two inch uh, separation between your electrical wiring and your heating cable. Um, any comments, guys? Any questions? So there's separation. Don't put your wires right next to the heating cable. That's another way of uh, of heating. We talked about the furnace, guys. The source of heat for the electric furnace, as well as the fan, as uh, electrical resistance. Um, recognized, so it's, it's listed, recognized by UL, and it needs a voltage variation of 90, 98%. Not a big deal. You can, don't want to fluctuate the voltage more than 98%. But that's not a big of a deal. Okay, here is the formula, guys that you use to see the effect of voltage, to find the effect of voltage on um, on power. Um, I told you this one, you take the applied voltage, here's V, um, divided by, divided. this is um, uh, rated, this is V applied over V rated, and you score both of them. For example, let me tell you, um, if the voltage, if the if the equipment is, is how you apply this one, take this. Uh, I have an equipment that's rated for 240 volt. Uh, let's do the opposite to make it more. Oops. Let's have an equipment that's rated for 120 volt, and I decided to bring a power with it 240. Can you guys see that? There's a piece of equipment rated for 120, and I'm bringing only what 240. Okay. Look what happens when you apply this factor, very easy. So the applied voltage is 240, here's 240. The rated voltage is 120, here's 120. Square the two, that will get you two. Square the two, that'll get you four. You see when I told you when you double the voltage, you have four times more power? Okay, now then, here's the power applied voltage. The, the new power will be four times the rated power, the P rated. So if that if that was a thousand watt and you double the voltage in that boy, look what happened. You get four times a thousand will get you what? Four thousand. What? So what happened when uh when a piece of equipment is rated for a thousand and now it's burning at four thousand, four times more. You burn this piece of equipment. <laughs> Literally. Okay, now if you cut the voltage, you do the opposite, guys. You cut the voltage by half. This will be flipped. It becomes like 120 but divided by 240. Can you see that? This becomes 1 over 2 squared. This becomes 1 fourth, right? 1 fourth. And that will cut the voltage by 4. Double the voltage. You double the voltage. Four more, four four more times. Four times more power. Cut the voltage by half. One fourth. That's the uh, correction factor for voltages. This is not what we do, though, guys. We would never, you would never double the voltage or cut the voltage by half an equipment. The electrical utility is used all the time. If you have a, a distribution line coming to your building and the distribution line is 4160, 4160 volt, and they need more power out of it, they up the voltage level by having another transformer. They might have to change some insulations. They will change some insulations. They make it, uh, say, 13.8, uh, kind of double it, 13.8. By doubling, see the power line sitting there? By doubling the voltage on it, how much power can they get out of the same poles four times? So imagine if the, if the line in your neighborhood was feeding 16 homes and they want more development in the area, they need to feed more. By upgrading the voltage in that area, as in doubling it, now they can get four times sixteen. So it's it's a big concept, the the, the concept of, of of doubling the voltage or making the voltage more. Okay, control of electric baseboard heater. The all when when it comes to heat, guys, the most important thing you have to pay attention is I need to power it one good. We know one point two five, and we size. Then we need to control it. Am I providing the control? Yes. Your options are thermostat tied to the electric furnace. If it's a baseboard heater, you also need some type of thermostat. For thermostat, for baseboard heaters, you can have a line one or we can have a low voltage one. What's the difference between them? A line one, guys, if the equipment is burning at 120, that will be 120. Uh, if a load one, typically 24 volt. So they have a transformer. 
and you'll see um, a thermostat can be used to control the electric baseboard heater. Um, you may need to convert what into so these thermostats are rated into amps. So if you want to know if this thermostat, if the line ones are rated for, uh, you want say if you want to buy a thermostat for a, a baseboard heater and you need to know would it match? Piece of cake. If your um, baseboard heater, let's just say my baseboard heater was a thousand watt, right? So you take the thousand watt and divide it by. Okay, Adam. You have two options. You want to burn, you can burn this one, buy it at 120 or 240. What do you want to buy? Pick a voltage. 120 or 240? 240. So I want to burn it at 240. Okay, can you guys do the math for me? 1,000 divided by 240, by uh, 240. Anybody? So close to four. Four. Okay, 4.16 amps. Now you need a thermostat that can get you 4.16 on amps. Okay, I have a thermostat that rated for 15 amps. Would the 15 amp thermostat handle a 4.16 amp? Yep, check, done. Can you guys see that? Because thermostat rated in amps. So you find the amps, 4.1. Uh, smallest I can get is 15 amps. Here's a 15 amp thermostat, line thermostat. Okay, so that's how we size the thermostat for these. Okay, here's the, like I said, guys, you have when you have a baseboard heater, it looks like this. Um, a couple of things, number one, you have to provide a power. This is called the power circuit, power circuit, which is the branch also, with the code called the branch circuit. The branch circuit, I want to bring to your attention, guys, when you have baseboard heaters, 240, the code allows you, Adam, to re-identify the white as a black conductor and use it. When you guys are using cable, 12 2 12 2 come as a black white right conductors so how are you going to use it as two hots can you guys see this one you have to you can re-identify the white as a black and use it as part of your power circuit okay here's my relay then you bring it to a relay this is a low voltage uh, low voltage thermostat can you guys see the voltage then this will drop it to 24 volts and bring it to a low voltage thermostat that you can put it in the center of the room when the thermostat kicks in, this is how it works. So my this is called my control. This is a class two control circuit. Class two control circuit. When this kicks in, right? Look at that. When this closes, it'll, you'll put a, core, a voltage, 24 volt across this coil, and will close these contacts. Now my AC, my uh, electric furnace is running. When it reaches, that's when it kicks in. When it kicks off, it will de-energize the voltage across this 24 volt, and your system will, uh, your uh, AC system will, um, um, your uh, baseboard heater will turn off. Any comments, any questions, guys, about low voltage thermostat? Karen, Derek, it's so important, guys, you're not control people. Very important for you to understand that. There's something called the power circuit, that's called the branch circuit. Then there's a control circuit when it comes to mechanical equipment. Always ask yourself, when you have an air handling unit or a chiller, when you go layout, you say, okay, here's a power powering, who's doing the control? How are we gonna control that baby? We have building automation system to control it. Typically for building, for commercial industrial building guys, all the control is done by the mechanical contractor and the mechanical engineers. Because they, it's their equipment, they know what to do with it. But it's good to know about it. Okay, two wire cables, so making the conductors. So this is just tells you if you have a two wire cable, like we said here, you can re-identify the white. The you identify it as a black conductor by putting a black tape on it, so you can use it like here. This is a 12-2. I have a 12-2 conductor, one black, one white. But this is not a neutral conductor. I need to re-identify it. Re-identify it. Okay, so you can re-identify it. Uh, how do how do you re-identify this one? You can use it by pin. Color tape is the most common one. Color tape or any effective means. So Adam, when you are wearing a baseboard heater 240 and you're using 12 2 and amp cable, the first thing you need to do is at the end of it, you're gonna go put the white, put a black tape at that end, the end of this cable, at the other end, black tape. Now the white became black. 
and you can run it as a 240. Okay, so that's, here's um, uh, a thermostat, line thermostat. So you can see the line thermostat, all the controllers inside it, there is no control circuit in it. That's what commonly people use in their basements. They don't mess around with the relays and so forth. So they buy, you can buy these at Home Depot for 20 amps, 15 or 20 amps, 20 amp thermostat. And then you bring the power into it, the power out of it, and based on what you set it, you're going to set it at, uh, I don't know, you're going to set it at uh, 70, 68 or so, 70, 72. It will turn this heat as, uh, this baseboard heater on and off as the temperature hits the, the limit, the lower limit, and off, uh, on, lower limit, off, upper limit. It's like thermostat in your house for the furnace. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand how to do that. Cool. How do you size them? Here's the amp for the equipment. This is sized by 1.25 times the amp. Um, this will be. This also will be sized by 1.25 times the amp for your equipment. And uh, the thermostat typically is sized to match the thermostat, the, the equipment term, the amp. So this is based on the amp of the equipment. All right. That's it. Take the baseboard heater, multiply it by 1.25, size your over device, as well as uh, as well as your uh, uh, your uh, bright circuit conductor. The thermostat you must match uh, if the if the baseboard heater is 100 amp, well 10 amps, your thermostat have to be 10 amps. Any comments? Any questions? Do you see any disconnect here? We don't need a disconnect for that. The thermostat will have an off position. That will be your your off position for this uh, for this equipment. Okay. For electric baseboard heater, guys, because of heat, electric baseboard heaters and all these, they need the conductors to be rated for 90 degrees. So you use THHN, not THH, not THW. Um, some heaters you can they run at 120 or 240, 15 or 20 amps. A lot of them, guys, <clears throat> heater has 150 or 20 amp receptacle. Some heaters, baseboard heaters, at the end of it right here, you're going to have a receptacle. You have a receptacle at the end of the baseboard heater. <clears throat> if you have a receptacle at the end of the baseboard heater, you have to feed it separately. So you're going to come and feed it from a 15 or 20 amp separate. Separate feed for these pieces of equipment. <clears throat> Location of electric baseboard heater, guys. What you cannot do, and that was on the test probably, if your baseboard heater is right, your receptacles are here, you cannot put the baseboard heater right above them, uh, and you're right underneath it because the cord will be banging over the baseboard heater and burn. So be aware that sh the shock hazard as well as the uh, fire hazard, you do not, you can't have the cable hanging over um, an electric baseboard heater. Okay, here's what we're looking for, guys. This is violation of the code uh, when you do it. So in order to solve this problem, Adam, what they do is they put a receptacle right built into <clears throat> the baseboard heater, and they feed it from a 15 amp circuit that feeds other receptacles. And then the baseboard heaters, they bring a 20 amp circuit that feeds the baseboard heater. Can I get you guys to understand? If you have a receptacle built into the baseboard heater, the baseboard heater circuit will feed only that baseboard heater, and the receptacle will be fed from a different circuit. Thumbs up, chat. We understand that one? Okay, good. So that's basically what you're going to do. <clears throat> um, wall mounted heaters. Wall mounted heaters, guys, some of these have, these will be not baseboard, but will be um, a heating element, most of them with a fan. So use them in the bathroom. Remember what we did, the uh, heat light combo that we did yesterday? That's a good example of wall mounted heaters. Typically can enclosure that is installed in rough fan. So you have an enclosure exactly like the fan in the bathroom. You have an enclosure and when you're done, you put the fan right into it. Um, and there's some heating element into it to give you a heat. Okay, built-in thermostat. You can have it with, uh, with or without built-in thermostat. How do you control it in a variety of heating elements? So you can have a thermostat um, on the wall that control it, a line thermostat that control it or a built-in thermostat for it. A good example of this one, guys, the one that you're doing for me in the, uh, in the stairways. Either you can use uh, wall-mounted heaters 
or baseboard heaters. Baseboard heaters is one option. The only difference, most wall-mounted heaters, were, some of them have a fan inside it, so it throws the air, others don't. Any comments, any questions, guys, before we move into the heat pumps? Any comments, any questions? So you have a baseboard heater, you have an electric furnace to heat your house. When we go to the commercial industrial, we start using boilers. We start using boilers. Heating pump, guys, what they do is the heating pump, I don't know anybody have seen the heating pump, it's the opposite of an AC. They use, instead of cooling the building, they heat the building. It's reverse function, the AC. Um, air conditioning operating in reverse. They call it air conditioning operating in reverse. So when you size it, you size it like an air conditioning, except instead of, of removing heat from the building, it injects heat into the building. Uh, change the direction of the flow of, of system, refrigerant and so forth. Split heating, heating they have, they call it split heating some pump. They have an outdoor unit, an indoor, um, and an indoor unit, the fans, uh, the hermetic motors and fans and goes and so forth. Outdoor and indoor. Outdoor unit with a hermetic furnace consists of an outdoor and an indoor unit. Exactly like the AC system, guys, except it works in reverse. Instead of cooling the building, it pumps heat into the building. Heat in the building. Grounding, very, very important, guys. All your equipment must be grounded. All, 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 look at these. All these metallic, have metallic frames. Conductive material must be grounded. So you bring a, a conductor, you tie it to the ground. Um, and never use the white, the grounding conductor as your ground. The grounding conductor or the neutral cannot be used to ground the equipment. You have to always use equipment grounding conductor. There are three conductors, guys, dear to your heart. One is the ungrounding conductor, that's called hot. The grounded conductor, that's called the neutral. The equipment grounding conductor, that's the ground. If you graduate from here without knowing these three major ones, ask me for a refund. I always say when I teach uh, code update classes, guys, these are very, very important. Three, three uh, wires in every circuit that you encounter. The only difference is if you have a three-phase circuit, look what happened. You had two more. Now we have three hots, a neutral, sometimes you don't, and a ground. That's it. So all the circuits that encounter, guys, 99% of the circuits they're going to encounter are five wire circuits. Either, no more than five. Three phase and a neutral and a ground, that's one combo. How about three phase and a ground, another combo, that's four wire. Or two hots and a neutral and a ground, another combo. Or you can have, sometimes you can have um, one hot and a ground and a neutral. So these, all of them are within one hand. The combination you're going to encounter. Okay, any comments, guys, before we move into the AC system? So we're done with the heating. We have electric furnace, we have baseboard heaters, we have wall mounted heaters. The common denominator for all the heater guys is very simple thing. They are continuous load. You are, when you install them to size them based on 1.25, you are to ask the question as I know I'm going to power them, bring power to them. Who is going to control them? Talk about the control. Who provides the control? Commercially, industrial commercial, 99% of the time, the mechanical engineers, mechanical contractors take care of business. Your job is to at least understand what they're doing. They have an AC uh, uh, BFD, and we'll talk about this one as we reach a commercial. Um, okay. How about cooling the building? Let's talk about cooling the building, heating the building. Any comments, guys, before I move into cooling the building? When you cool your building, you have two options. You can have a window air conditioning, right? That's what we call it, we're into a, 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 um, uh, air conditioning. Cooling buildings, guys, is based on the concept of refrigeration cycle. Refrigeration cycle is based on the concept of you use a refrigerant material, you pressurize it, you can collect the heat through the refrigerant from the room and throw that heat outdoor. That's called the refrigeration cycle, major cycle. We'll talk about it in details in the commercial. That's it. If you cool a building, the cooling of a building is based on the concept of refrigeration cycle. Refrigeration cycle, you have a coolant that you put it in a coil into a room. It collects the heat from the room. Take that coolant outdoor, blow the air right through it, and throw that heat outdoor. That's your concept. You can do a window air conditioning 
120 or 240. If you have window air conditioning, the recommendation, guys, is a 20 amp circuit for it that feed either 20 amp circuit 120 or 20 amp circuit 15. Window air conditioning plugged it in. That's option number one, typically. Option number two, if you have a split AC unit, indoor, outdoor, the blower indoor, the compressor is outdoor. Um, then if you have in both of them, guys, the article that talks about AC equipment or the refrigeration cycle is article 440. We will be talking about air article 440 for a long time, guys. Um, a couple of things when it comes to um, plug in window air conditioning, you can either, like I said, you can use um, a 240 or 120 configuration for them. This is 240 only and 120, 240 equipment. That's a plug in. So, a plug in in dwellings, guys, typically 20 amp circuit, 15 or 120 or 240, depending. Do you want it 240? Yep, 20 amp, 240. Do you want it 15? Yep, uh, 120? Yep, 20 amp, 120. Now, uh, central he uh, heating and cooling system, guys. <clears throat> so now the central air that they use is they have the outside air conditioning, right? Blowing air inside your, your building. Uh, for air conditioning and or heat pump found through the programs, right? So there's, uh, there's a lot of, because these are high users of power, because the air conditioning and or the heat, if it's electric, are con high consumers of power, what the utility guys give you a saving switch. The saving switch is you can, they can control your equipment in return. They give you um, a deal. A deal. Okay. You're going to hear the term, and we will talk about this one as we go. Uh, Karen, my friend, it's called heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. We talked about the heating. We talked about the ventilation. That's your fans. This is your furnace. Now we're going to talk about the air conditioning, a.k.a. cooling. This is cooling. How do you cool the building? With with the cooling when it comes to cooling guys article 440 talks about the cooling we'll talk about this one a little bit more details and we'll move on every time you have a compressor a compressor that has hermetic refrigerant motor compressor they call it hermetic refrigerant motor compressor that's a compressor a motor built with a compressor guys that compress the refrigerant every time we have this combo a compressor motor combo called hermetic refrigerant motor compressor made by manufacturer the smarter than chad matt years ago decided that this is special motor it's not just a motor anymore it's a special one it can be used and abused more so the ndc code book guys recognize this and assign a standalone article for it article 440 otherwise article 430 will cover that one um why do we have a whole article for it? Unique characteristics. It can be worked harder, typically, because the coolant will cool the motor. What they do, guys, is as they cool the building, the cool the coolant will go around the bearing of the motors and cool it in the process. So a chiller will cool itself as well as cooling the building. By doing this way, no problem. By doing it this way, they can make it work harder. They can make it work harder. Okay, I want you guys to pay attention to these terminology, please. These terminologies that we use with the heating and with the cooling equipment, um, very important terminology. Okay, so these are starting on page um, page uh, 499. Rated load current. So rated load current. Rated load current. So this is, I want to highlight the most important one, guys. The most, and let's start, minimum circuit ambicity. Minimum circuit ambicity is the most important one and maximum over temperature device so minimum circuit ambicity maximum over temperature device a c minimum circuit ambicity uh, they will tell you 21 amp maximum over temperature device 30 amp fuse uh, circuit breaker so this will be a 30 amp circuit breaker this will be a number 10 conductor okay I need your attention here, guys. When it comes to the HVAC equipment, we use the name blade value. Everything that you can see here is on the name blade of the chiller or the AC unit. On the name blade of the chiller of the AC unit, they will have something called MCA, minimum circuit ambicity. That's how you size the conductor. 
I'm going to write right here, conductor. Conductor, or I don't like that word, uh, conductor size. Or branch circuit size. How do you size a branch circuit? Right. So if this is 21 amps, you go to the NEC code book and you find yourself number 10 conductor and done. No math needed. Maximum over competition device, guys, which is the second one here, the second important one. Maximum over competition device. That's the maximum fuse or circuit breaker you can put on this equipment. Um, so I have this AC, I have 30 amp, number 10 done. Set. You don't need to do anything else. These two values are the single most important values in the ACA. Any comments, guys, before I go to the other values? Any comments before I go to the other values? So when you have an AC unit, the nameplate will say MCA on it, 21 amp, take it to 310.15B16, like we did yesterday, under a 60 degree column, size of conductor. No math needed. Maximum competition device, no math needed. 30 amp circuit breaker, you put circuit breaker. If they say fuse, you must put a fuse. You can't put a circuit breaker if they say fuse. Or you can't put a fuse if they say a circuit breaker. If they, circuit, if they say circuit breaker or fuse, you can put either. Does that make sense? Very, very important that with the AC units. Okay, so in this case, it's a 30 amp circuit breaker. I stuck a 30 amp circuit breaker. Right next to the equipment, guys, also you need what? A disconnect. You need a disconnect so you can isolate the equipment. That's just a disconnect like this to isolate the equipment. Any question about these two before we go into the other ones? These are the most important ones, really. The rest of them, rated load current, guys, is when the equipment is running, that's the, the, the amount of current that the equipment will use when it's running, rated load current. Also, branch circuit selection current, these two values, these two values, branch circuit selection current, the manufacturer of the AC equipment can, they can test these equipment to work at a current that's called the branch circuit selection current. So they can overwork them a little bit. Um, and these two values are on the nameplate of the equipment. So I want to remind you before I get into it, the two most important thing, math, is these two. Done. You don't really need the rest. But the rest, you need to understand them. What they do, they take the rated load current, which is how much current the equipment was, was going to consume while it's running, right? Um, or the brand circuit selection current, the manufacturer can have another value that says, yeah, we're going to work a little bit more harder, and we're going to write a brand circuit selection current. These two guys, what they do with these two, then you multiply 1.25, and that's how you size your conductors. Conductors. Or... You multiply by 1.75, and that's how you, uh, you size your overcurrent protection device. They use these two, the largest of the two. I'm going to say largest. Largest, the largest of the two to size your conductor or your overcompetition device. But having said that, you don't need to do that even. <laughs> Am I contradicting myself? You really don't need to do that. This is how they come up with this value, guys. These two values. When they size these two values, MCA and MOP, that's how they do it. They take the 1.25 multiplied by the largest of these two. That's all what you need to know. So when I give you an example, guys, and I say the rated load amps of this equipment um, is 5, size of conductor, you take 5, multiplied by 1.25, size of conductor, multiplied by 1.75, size of overcompetition device. If I told you... The nameplate says minimum circuit capacity is 5 and maximum competition device is 15. You're going to go size the conductors for 5 and over competition device for 15. Can I get you guys to understand that these two values are calculated based on the largest of these two multiplied by 1.25 for conductor and 1.75 for over competition device? Any comments, guys, about these two values? Now, the la this value here, they call it not too important, maximum continuous current, MCC. This is the largest amount of continuous current that the equipment can handle before it fails, before it completely fails. We don't use it a whole lot. Um, not really a whole lot of uh, um, use for it. So this one is 156% of rated load current. So math. They take, if the rated load current was 100, 
that multiply it by 156, they'll give you 156 amps. That's a maximum current that this equipment can work before it completely fails. We don't use it a lot for our sizes. It means a lot to the manufacturer of the equipment, but it, but that's how we use it. Okay, so these are the maximum continuous current, the largest amount of current that the equipment can uh, run with before it fails. Um, lock throttle current, lock throttle current, guys. Here, if the AC unit, if the AC unit is to stop, that's the largest amount of current that the unit will will suck from the system if it stall or when you start this piece of equipment who cares this will help you guys later on when we start doing coordination over current protection coordination doesn't mean much to you and when we start sizing the disconnect it will help you to size the disconnect any comments any questions about these if there's one thing very important in the whole topic today guys is this page can i have thumbs up about this i'm going to go over it this time and in the spring as well as well as the commercial uh, commercial so when you go to the spring guys and i give you an air handling unit and i'm sorry a chiller and you're going to start find and the chiller has an mca you you better understand what an mca is if you understand it now you're good if you don't you have another chance in the spring to understand it so so important these concepts on the name plate are so important summarize the most important ones is mca that's the conductor size mop that's over capacity device size Next, these uh, rated load current or bright circuit selection current, you choose the largest. If you don't have these two values, if under under uh, uh, mind the word F, if you don't have these two values, that's how we size them. You take the largest of these two, multiply by 1.25, 1.75, size them. Um, maximum continuous current is just for the manufacturer. That's the largest that you can uh, consume before you burn your equipment. Lock total current is sized. We use it to size the overcome protection device for coordination as well as for sizing the disconnects. Any comments, any questions, guys? Comments, questions. So that's probably the single most important thing. The last thing, guys, about this topic is the energy. These are all, read them on your own. Uh, I believe the most important one is the SEER, SEER 13. I can't remember if they're 14 or 15, whatever they are. Sear, Sears, Sears or Sears, uh, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. So the, um, the manufacturer guys <clears throat> rate their equipment based on how efficient they are. For example, Adam, the higher the Sear, Sear 13 is much more efficient than Sear, well, efficient, more efficient than Sear 11. So if you want to buy an air conditioning, you want to ask about the Sear. What Sear is it? Is it Sear 13 or Sear 12? Some series are not even allowed to be manufactured because they're not efficient. So that's a comment. Another one is the energy efficient rating. So all these guys are ways of making sure these equipment that we buy are energy efficient because we're becoming environmentally friendly, rightfully so, and we care about mother nature. Um, and we want to consume the least amount of energy. The, we, we, our goal is to consume the least amount of energy to perform our best. Right? How can you consume the least amount of energy uh, to perform your best in any building? That's where the whole rating comes to be. So all these rating to rate equipment, we don't get involved in it that much, guys. Why? Because who size the AC, AC and chillers? Mechanical engineers, big deal for them. Non-coincidental load. If you have an AC and a furnace, this one is, let's say, 65 amp. And this one is 70 amp, um, 70 amp. These two are, do you heat and cool the building at the same time? Do you run your furnace and your air conditioning at the same time? No, these are called non-coincidental load. So when you do your sizing, you only use the largest. That's it. When you size your service, when you size your feeders, you choose the largest. They are called non-coincidental load. Next week, my friends, when you do the load calculation for Chad, this is going to be in your little cut. It's called non coincidental load. Highly unlikely that these loads will run at the same time. So when you size your service, as you size your service, here's my service coming and feeding one circuit breaker here and one circuit breaker here. When you size your service, the only one that counts for the size is the largest of the two. 
Can I emphasize the word? This is for service and feeders, not for branch circuits. For branch circuits, you size the branch circuit exactly for this, branch circuit for this. When it comes to the feeder, the only thing that counts is the largest. So the size of my feeder right here is 75 amps, not 65, not the total. Largest of the two. Okay, we talked about HVAC equipment. Guys require an AC unit next to them. You are required to provide 120, 15, or 20 amp receptacle, accessible um, at the same level, not further than 25 feet from the equipment. That's required by code. So if you have a rooftop unit, you know what they do for rooftop unit? They have a disconnect like this, guys. And here's the line side, here's my disconnect. And they come from the line side of a disconnect and they feed a receptacle. That's approved. Can you guys see that? I have a receptacle here right by the disconnect, the line side. So if you disconnect the piece of equipment here, you can work on it. Plug in your receptacle here, work on the equipment. Why? Because can you guys see where they feed the receptacle? That's commonly used a rooftop unit. When you go there, you find a disconnect like this, right next to it is what a receptacle built into it so you disconnect the equipment shut it down now you plug in your equipment here and go work on it that's one way of doing it or you can have a standalone receptacle right in the, in the wall next to it 25 feet same level uh accessible accessible this is just a couple of things guys when you deal with heating and cooling you have to be a, a, aware where you put your natural gas meters you have separate of three feet away from ignition. Um, when you put your meter, your gas meter versus your electrical three-way separation from electrical meter discharge switches. The idea here is you don't want to put your gas meter right next to the electrical meter or right next to the a disconnect. So it can be an ignition source, right? You put gas next to an ignition source, you got explosion. So this is just a quick coordination issues. That's all what I have, guys, for you. I want to, any comments, any questions? Any comments? I want to show you very quick a couple of slides, and then I'll let you go. Um, we talked about this one, guys, how to size that one. I'm going to give an example. This is a couple of thermostats and all this good stuff, how you set the, these are your thermostat. Here's your um, low-voltage thermostat with the 24 convert to 12 volts. Um, we talked about this one line. You can feed two heaters from the same thermostat as long as as long as they're rated. For example, if this is uh, let's just say this is an eight m and this is an eight m heater together, they will be seen as sixteen amps. My conductor here will be number twelve, right? Number twelve, and we're good to go, right? Well, typically not eight here because you need continuous load. Um, let's just say. Um, I want 8 and 8 to 16 amps. Yeah, that's 16 amps. One, two, oh, yeah, 16 amps. Um, so let's just say, yeah, for the time being, let's just say 8, eight 16 amps. This will be rated 16, so you buy a 20 amp uh, thermostat and controls both of them. Controls both of them. Any comments, any questions, guys, about that? You can put, as long as the amps are less than 20 amps, you can, and this will be a 20 amp circuit. You can add two or three heaters to the same thermostat, but you can't overload. If this thermostat is rated for 20 amps, I can six, eight, eight, 16. I'm still less than, less than 20, I'm good to go. So that's um, what this is all about. We talked about the baseboard heaters and, and lay them out. You can have a built in uh, receptacle like this in the baseboard heater, especially in dwelling. You can put the receptacle right above a blank. That's okay, not above the heater. A blank is fine. You cannot put your receptacle right above the heater. We know why, because you don't want to burn the the fee, the, um, the cable. Electric baseboard heater prohibited, putting this way. You guys have seen that one. This is a couple of uh, built-in heaters. You see them in walls. Same thing, heating elements. Some of them has a fan in it. Others don't. If they have a fan, guys, they will tell you rated amps. Here's a couple of examples. Look at the controller. Some of them has a built-in controller, on-off switch, um, and built-in. You can have a fan or auto. You can run it a fan only or auto or whatever. 
So a lot of them have a fan though with that. Different types. Talked about these one. Um, for AC system, guys, for AC system, here's that refrigeration cycle. And we'll talk about refrigeration cycle. What they do for AC, this is the outside unit. This is the inside unit. I want to bring to your attention, guys, that you have to bring a feeder that feeds the outside unit with the circuit breaker. The inside unit also need a, a, a feeder. This is typically 15 amp. This is typically 30 amp. Two pole. This is single pole. Here you can see coming from the same panel, one for the outside unit, one for the furnace. This is inside the furnace, right? Um, you have to have a disconnect. This is typically a 15 amp snap switch. Snap switch right here. This is uh, if this, I'm sorry, electric heating element. If this is an electric heating element, it will be completely different. But ignore this one. If that was not an electric heating element, that's what you do. If you're an electric heating element, the only thing that was, was different, you know what happened here? Instead of 15 amp, it becomes 100 amp because you're burning electricity. Here's your control circuit, guys. Then you can see the thermostat controlling this furnace give you heat and cool. Um, okay, you can see that the wires, there are wire control wires going to the furnace from the thermostat as well as from the AC unit outdoor. Here's your refrigerant. What happens is your refrigerant comes over here, collects the heat, comes back, and throws, you see that fan? The compressor will compress it and collect the heat from the room, right? Because the air is going right through it. You're blowing air through the coil, mechanical coil. You're collecting the heat from the room, taking, sucking the heat through the refrigerant outdoor. You have another fan blowing the heat out. Have you guys ever stuck your head right above the AC when it's running? See how hot the, the, the heat that coming out of it? Did you try that one? You put your head right there and see it's so hot coming. That All this heat is re being removed from the house. That's how you get the heat. So you collect the heat, you put it over here, and you throw it in it. And I'll, we'll go over the cycle of refrigerant at a, a different time, guys. Not, um, but you have your compressor as well as the fan right here. So that's it. So control circuit is right here, control circuit. Power circuit, I have power circuit here, and I also have power circuit here. Power for the furnace, for the fan, the blower right here. And this power will feed the follow. Look at that. It feed the compressor, and it will feed the fan. The compressor as well as the fan. This is the heat cool combo AC central. They call it central air. Central air. If it's electric, here's my cooling coil. Actually, my cooling coil is at the top here, so this will be connected. You have typically, when I say a coil, guys, it's a mechanical coil. Mechanical coils are pipes, lubed pipes, and they have refrigerant going right through them. That's all. And then the, and, and, and that refrigerant collects the, the heat. Any comments, guys, any questions? And again, we'll talk about that refrigerant and at a different time. <clears throat> Here's how you size these. We talked about the sizing for the AC unit outdoor. I'm going to just emphasize, if this is my AC unit outdoor, I want to remind you guys, you need a disconnect here. Uh, you need a fuse for the disconnect. And you need a conductor. And how do you size these? Very simple. This is, the fuse size will be called maximum over current protection. The conductor size will be minimum circuit amplitude. No calculation needed. No calculation needed. These two will be on the nameplate. Both these two values, name plate. If you don't have the nameplate, this is how you size them. You size this one, 1.75 times rated load current. And you size this one, 1.25 times rated load current or brand circuit selection current, whichever is larger. Can I get you, Adam, to understand? You do the math only if you don't have the values. If you have the values, you just use them. That's it. Two pole, no neutral. Do you see any neutral going to the AC unit outdoor? That's for the AC unit outdoor. No neutral. We don't need neutral. They run, can you guys see that they're running the compressor at 240? And they're running the fan also at 240. Both of them are running at 240. Nothing is running at 120. If it runs at 120, then you need a, a you need a, a one another wire. Here's the nameplate. 
right here, this information will be directly coming from the nameplate. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand this. I will go over a couple of examples after after um, I give you guys, we we'll size these, basically. So that's, um, that's how we see, you can see the relay here is contacting both of them, the compressor as well as the um, unit. When it comes to the AC units, guys, if the manufacturer has told you that they need a fuse, you have to put a fuse. So look at this. AC conditioning name blade reads maximum size 40 amp. Can you guys see this one fuse? Did this say fuse? If it says a fuse, then you have to provide a fuse. Where do they provide the fuse? Right in here. Can you guys see that? Here's a fuse, 40 amp. You still have to have a 40 amp circuit breaker here, but right next to the equipment, you put a fuse disconnect. If it says a fuse, you must provide a fuse. Why can't I put the fuse into this panel? Because this is a circuit breaker panel. It, it will cost you an arm and leg to change the circuit breaker panel, part of it, into a fuse panel. Okay, it says a fuse, you have to provide a fuse. If it's circuit breaker panel like this, you put the fuse in the disconnect, exactly like this boy here. Okay, then here's option number two. This is what you cannot do. You cannot have a non fuse disconnect. Why you can't have a non fuse disconnect? There's no fuse in it because it says fuse. Can't do that. You have to put a fuse in it. Um, if it says, look at this. Now, this is another name, uh, name plate. And this name plate, guys, it says the following. <clears throat> this is saying uh, a hacker. You're going to hear a fuse or a hacker circuit breaker. A hacker heating uh, air conditioning rated. It's called hacker. You hear it all the time. My understanding is almost all the circuit breakers right now are rated for hackers. In the past, they were not. What they do, guys, is they, they're rated to work with ACs. That's all what you need to do. If they're hackers, it means they have been tested to work with air conditioning. Not just with lights, not with receptacles, not with fans, with air conditioning. Okay? So if it says a fuse or a circuit breaker, look what happened. I have my circuit breaker here. Do I need a fuse? No. Because the circuit breaker will take care of it. Do you guys see that? I can have an unfused. You still have to have a disconnect for safety, but non-fused. So that's basically a few um, a few things, guys. About oh, uh, here's uh, here's where you can have a disconnect, guys, with a receptacle to meet to work on equipment. They have a disconnect receptacle combo. What they do is they feed this one from the line side of the disconnect. If this is my load side, they feed it from the line side of the disconnect. Or from a separate circuit too. Uh, kilowatt rating. This is just a couple of uh, equipment, electrical model. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's basically all what I have for the for you guys. Any comments? Any questions? Comments? Questions? This is talking heating and cooling air conditioning. So I'm going to give you guys um, ten minutes. And I really would like to do at least one or two examples. I promise not to go further than eight, uh, not, uh, 9.30. So should we have 10 minutes and I'll, I'll do one or two examples of calculation. Everybody's okay? Cool? Thank you.